I ran into my friend Joanna this week, and she told me that she never flies on the holidays, but she's going to Portland for Thanksgiving because her daughter said she wants to see her. Joanna told me that she only, she's only going because she knows that something must be wrong if her daughter wants to see her. I said, well, I'm always glad to see you and there's never anything wrong. She said, you're right, but who wants to go to Portland for Thanksgiving? Welcome. Welcome to Sunday Coffee Hour. I'm Stanley Smith at Sunday Coffee Hour. We talk about everything and nothing. This Sunday we talked about is Palestine in Israel or is Israel in Palestine? We talked about learning Swedish, department store Santas, and seeing our mistakes in the future. And also, who's paying for all the Palestinian protests on Lakeshore Drive? The readings at Washington National Cathedral were from Zechariah. God will wipe us out completely. We build houses for ourselves, but we will never inhabit them. It all comes to foolishness in the end. And also from Thessalonians, those who sleep, sleep at night, but we're called to live in the light of day. The gospel reading was from Matthew. It was the parable of the talents. We simply can't win for losing with God. And we're beginning to see this as a pattern. At Washington National Cathedral, the sermon was by Rose Duncan. She preached about trusting slaves with great wealth. And the gift of wealth is both wealth and time. God doesn't expect equal results from each of us, but we can recognize the tremendous trust that God puts in us. How we picture God has profound consequences for ourselves and for others. We can respond in fear or in faith. Rose said we're, we often prefer to condemn ourselves than be condemned by others or by God. Rose said, fear immobilizes and faith mobilizes. None of us want to go to Portland, but we go anyway. At St. James, the um, service started with Lisa, uh, mentioning that, uh, reminding us that the word is offered each Sunday for us to be heard and for us to digest inwardly like food. And the sermon was by Stephen Balke, uh, during the service at St. James, there were a couple of kerfluffles in the service. Uh, the readings were not placed in the lectern, and the music director had to keep turning around to see where his place was in the service. Of course, they always have the ridiculous incense going on there with the smoke rising between every scene. It's all very amusing. You have to experience it, really, to appreciate it all. Stephen's sermon was uh, was trying to be a stewardship service sermon without, without really trying to be. The uh, uh, theme of uh, Stephen's sermon, he did a pretty good job. <laughs> he uh, talked about the difference between the abundance model and the scarcity model. And um, I do, I realize that at the end of the day, most churches are in the business of operating a church. And that that does cost money, but uh, most churches that get that right never lose sight of the greater purpose. And St. James is one of those churches. Uh, at other churches, we sometimes hear the social justice gospel and that we're all bad white people, which is probably true, but that talk is, is really just a cover for a greater sin of church. And that's the sin of being immoral preaching one thing and doing another. They preach against white racism when, in fact, they're just per perpetuating the system and, a, and mechanism of control and power, the mechanism of power, money, and control and subservience. Stephen said, uh, often we get what we project as our worldview. If we see the world as needing to be controlled and reined in, then that is what we will experience. And if we see the world as a place of freedom, then that is how we'll experience it. 
some of us are called to go into the darkness to bring a little light into the world but more times than not most people in the dark just just want to stay there so more important than um, being misguided immoral or being a control freak is how you operate when things get a little wonky and at saint james whenever there's a kerfuffle they always navigate it with a casual elegance and style I'm, I'm often asked about the conditions here in Chicago with the crime, immigrants, and lack of civic will. I, I tell people I really don't, I don't notice it because it's just a backdrop to how I live my life, and it's not central to anything about my life. In the film version of Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace, Audrey Hepburn and her family return to their bombed-out family home. And they're grateful to find a couple of bedrooms still intact. And they go about their lives amid the rubble of everything else. Here in Chicago, we, we have the immigrants and crime, and we live our lives against this backdrop. Many people here, surprisingly, are very, very angry about it and pointing fingers in every direction. The rest of us are just going about our lives with a little grace and style. Maybe that's immoral. I don't know. Joyce Shin told a story once uh, of her childhood playing with a friend in her family home. Her friend asked her about a, a picture of Jesus hanging in their home next to a picture of Buddha. Later, Joyce asked her father about it, and he told her there is no problem between, between Jesus and the Buddha. In this time of strife here in Chicago, the Middle East, and around the world, Wherever there is a little kerfuffle, let's see that not as a problem and instead lean into the good. Whether you're heading to Portland or staying home at home, everything will, will be well because God has already ordained it to be. And for that, we can be truly grateful. If you would like to join us at Sunday Coffee Hour, Sunday Coffee Hour is every Sunday at 12 noon Central Time on Zoom. I will include my email in the description of this video. I'll be happy to send you an invitation. And I look forward to seeing you very, very soon.